Hello and welcome to the show. We are here on Beam NG Drive with more of your automation rally cars taking on the nasty Italian stage. We start with a car built by a Furzen. This is the Dragon Motors Baby WRC. Uh, well, as you can tell, it is very much a full-on rally car. 1.6 litre turbo i4 at the front, all-wheel drive, some 370 horsepower going on from this. The turbo i4's popular choice uh, of engine overall, uh, especially for today's episode. Uh, Price-wise, 14,235 monies, so one of the cheaper vehicles that we have had so far. It certainly looks the part. I'm hoping it's going to drive the part, because this stage is tough for cars. My concern with this is a little bit the suspension. Uh, we've got very, very high riding suspension on this. We've seen body roll catch some cars out already. Uh, the gears are very short, and the power seems to only really kick in at the top end. So, <laughs> that is this is one of the difficulties. You can crank a lot of power out of these small engines. That's easy enough to do on automation. It's whether you can get the car to actually use it and be drivable when you put it into beam. Oh, God, this is a little bit fiddly. What are the brakes like? Uh, brakes are not too bad. Handbrake works for the hairpin uh, as well, which is nice. Just never quite sure what gear. I can't afford to be in the wrong gear at the wrong time with this car. It won't like that. And the gears are very, very short, so you're going to have to have a little bit of a fight. Uh, it's not worst. It's not worst car drive. Not terrible. My fears about the high, or the high suspension and the body moving around, like we saw from a cut off. We saw from the, was the weird rally contraption in the first episode, uh, is a little bit unfounded. With this, uh, it isn't too shabby around a lot of these corners. Oh, that's going to be a panic and grab the handbrake. Come on, find a way out of that hairpin, please, car. <laughs> Okay, one more, well, let's say one more corner, technically two more corners, one sort of chicane. Oh, got some frame rate issues going on there, that's not fun. However, it's a 120.6. If we, the game could not have a small death through a high speed section, that would be very, very nice. It's the fastest car we've ever had, though. The first car into the 120s, we're still some five seconds off the sunburst at the moment. Considering the frame rates had a small death at the end... That is not too disappointing. <laughs> Various bits have fallen off once we've hit the wall. Uh, yeah, a solid, solid start. Right, okay, I can feel my voice dying slightly by the end of that previous run. Uh, we are ready to go again. I'm hoping we won't have frame rate issues on the final high-speed chicane, because that's not really helping matters. Uh, don't really know how brave I dare be towards this first corner. It's kind of... We're struggling to get going out of these slower speed sections. If it's up to speed, it's okay, but out of some of these little hairpins, I'm really struggling to get the car to really go. And Christ, that's wide into there. It doesn't quite have as much grip as you'd ideally want through here, or as, you know, in comparison to the Summer. The Summer's is always going to be a difficult car to beat for grip, just with the way that the beam vehicles are made, and automation vehicles are made. Uh, but yeah, the, I think the issue we've got with this is here, for example. It's just waiting, waiting, waiting to try and get that power down. Um, and this is, as I said, there's a lot of difficulties with the big power uh, from small engines. You tend to get a lot of turbo lag. It's difficult to work with at times. Oh, <laughs> the bush through the car sideways. That is never, never what you want. It's a little bit of shaking from the car. We're going to say it's shaking with excitement. We're going to go with that one rather than trembling with fear. I think that's a preferable, preferable one. And into the hairpin we go. We'll chuck the car around. First gear is basically useless. Uh, second gear is not much better, but it is slightly better. Here we go, up towards the chicane. Now, throw the car through the chicane. It's much better this time around. Carry speeds towards the finish line. I say it's better this time around, and we've actually gone slower. That felt like a better run, and it was slower. In fact, it was an identical time to our leader from... <laughs> Sometimes this, this racing malarkey doesn't make much sense. Felt much faster. Actually wasn't. Um, I mean, it's still very quick. It's still got the fastest time so far. We have one more attempt with the vehicle. Can I get any more speed out of the car? I'm not sure where I'm going to find speed in this car. Um, it's just it's not the easiest to push excessively hard in, in a couple of places. Um, it's, again, it's certainly not bad at all to drive, do not get me wrong here. Uh, this corner, I guess we were quite wide at this turn in that second run, that might be where we lost some time. Yeah, this is a long, it's a long, never-ending corner, it kind of 
opens and tightens at the end. You've got to be very mindful of the rock face on the inside. Easy to clip that and snap a wheel. Grab the brakes down towards the hairpin we go. Oh, come on, get around there. It's, it doesn't like that hairpin. A couple of, well, both the hairpins, it's not the best at getting out the other side. But we will be careful. Again, so easy to clip the rock face on the inside and snap a wheel. If, as if you're not paying full attention. Even if you just get things a tiny bit wrong, you just get a little too much wheel spin, just get a little bit of a wobble going on from the car. You can end up clipping the rocks and that will be game over. Here we go. Between the next rock faces, we have got one more hairpin to go. We're going left into a right-hander. A bit of a Scandinavian flick almost on the way in there. We'll do the trick. Uh, thankfully, there's no rocks along that inside bit as we ran across there. Up towards the chicane, we're going to have to have a little tap on the brakes. Then we can go to full throttle once more. Hey, it's a good final run. Very good final run. 118.7. That is more like it. That was a good... I'm pleased with that. <laughs> I'm very, very pleased with that. Our first car sub 1 minute 20 actually blows the competition away a little bit in terms of time and 18 points. I mean, we have crashed it after the finish. Like, ooh, crashed that quite badly. Uh, <laughs> it's going to happen with this narrow, narrow straight stretch after the finish line. Yeah. 118, we have closed in massively on the sunburst. Still three seconds down, however... However, there's a big leap forward for, for the automation vehicles. A nice vehicle to drive, certainly. Up next, we have got something a little bit different. This built by Haruke's Kira. Again, I apologise if I mispronounce names. It's going to happen at some point. Uh, the particular car is called the Galaxian Andromeda Rally Sport. It is the least powerful car of the day at 246 horsepower. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though. If it can use it better than other cars, that will be nice. It's all-wheel drive, a 1.8-litre turbocharged i4 in this one. It is their cheapest car to date at 30. 13,879 monies. Uh, it has got pushrod suspension at the rear. Uh, also, interesting thing to note, well, I've got this pause because we're in a scenario and so on, uh, the tyres are not rally, or not off-road tyres. I shouldn't say rally tyres. Yeah, they are not off-road tyres on this particular vehicle. No crazy mighty wing at the back we've got. I'm not quite sure what to call the headlights on the wings. At the, I don't know what to call those, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's ready to go here. I... Don't know what at all to expect from this. I'm just hoping we will have some some usable power in the car. Okay, braking is a little interesting towards the first corner. Uh, locked everything up almost immediately, but, you know, we're fine through all of that. Are we going to be a slidey car through here? Uh, it seems pretty... It's going to be a bit slidey. Oh, it does seem pretty decent, though, to drive. I've got a little bit more confidence... Oh, that's going to get tighter through there. I've always got, like, a little more confidence, and the power is just much easier... It's just much easier accessible in this. Oh, that's very quick. I forgot how fast we're going to come barreling out of that section. Okay, that's something to be... I think something to be aware of. <laughs> when you get that long, long right-hander sorted, you then carry so much speed towards the hairpin... You've got to brake very early. So that's something to be aware of. Through the chicane we go. I like the way this car drives. I like the way this car drives. It's ever so slightly weird. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Ever so slightly loose, but it's very, very predictable with it. Like I can I can trust it through a lot of these corners in ways that I can't... Or certainly wasn't able to trust the previous car. And there's not to say that, well, that's... Well, down, I was so used to driving the car with incredibly short gear ratios. We've now got vaguely sensible ones. We managed to find a reverse on this run. I mean, it's the first run with the car. Oh, that's not got the line to take through there. About to have a very big crash. Um, it's the practice run. The good news for the car is for the practice run, that actually was pretty... For what was a very scruffy run, that looks like that's going to set a fast time. It looks like it might actually be able to set a pretty decent, pretty decent time. Yeah, it's a nice predictable... It'll slide, but it's very, very predictable. And with the way the gears are, the way the turbos, the way the engine is working, that's, it doesn't get this sudden burst of power that some of the crazy turbo vehicles do. Uh, much more manageable, almost. Oh, that's a little deep into the first corner. Right. We'll swap, side, we'll swap our way through there. There's not crazy body roll from this. It's... I mean, it's got off-road suspension, I would imagine, or it's certainly you know, a little softer than some cars. However, it's not crazy, crazy soft as we have seen from some, so we've not got a lot of that body roll occurring. Now, we're going to have to 
get ready on the brakes nice and early up here. This is what's catching a bunch of cars out. That was actually a little too early. But, well, we'll just chuck it in around there. We clonk the front on the, <laughs> on the hairpin. Right. That was a little early under brakes through there. Oh, that was a millimeter away. Oh, God, if, it, if you do get it wrong there, it's really fiddly to try. So you've got to try and do little, little movements with the car. But you can very easily upset the vehicle. Even with those little movements, very, very easily upset the car. Right, between the rocks we go in this. One more hairpin now. Let's not lose the back end on the way in. It's remarkably controllable. Probably the most controllable. For an oversteery car, this is about the most controllable I think I've had for a very long time. Uh, we'll chuck it through the chicane. Now I've got exactly the same thing I did last time. Doesn't quite have the grip for that part. Oh, we're going to spin. I'm going to have to brake. I can't carry the same the same pace we have with some other cars through there. It just doesn't grip the road well enough for that. You know, we saw with the Dragon, I could be fl almost flat through there. We could sort of dive down on the inside of the first part and the second part. I can't do that with this car because we're going to hit the wall on the exit. A good time, though. Into the 21s. Into the 21s. A very good time indeed. One more go. One more go. Can't afford mistakes with the car here. No no silly clonking into the wall would be good. Uh, fingers crossed and everything. As I say that, we almost run too deep into the first corner. <laughs> Get away with it. But, uh, yeah, this is what I say what usable power can do. It's, it's much more manageable in this car. And it's kind of almost more readily available in this car than some of the other cars that we've driven. So I can get away with sliding it around if things go a little bit awry. I mean, I'm hoping they don't go a little bit awry. Let's be honest, we don't want the car uh, really sliding if we can help it. Now, earlier on the brakes here... Oh, <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, I think with the non-off... Like, with the non-off road tyres, we've still got pretty decent grip here, but it is a little more sketchy under brakes. Now, that might also be an element of the car. It's very hard to tell. We've not had enough... We've not had enough data, so we've not had enough cars run through here to tell, but... Uh, there are there's a lot of moving around under brakes in this that is a little scary. I'm just about getting away with it by being a touch careful. That's a bit wide. That's a bit wide through there. We well, we I say we recover. We get away with it. Yeah, here I'm, I've got to be really careful that I'm not using almost too much brakes. It just doesn't rev up out of that hairpin. Annoyingly, uh, we couldn't get that going quite well enough. We will have to have a little bit of a break on the way through here. Nicer done, much nicer done this time around. However, no, <laughs> it's not going to be, not going to be good enough. A good, a good fun vehicle, a good fun vehicle to drive in all of that uh, was a tiny bit scary trying to get it slowed down in a few places. A lot of, a lot of. I don't know whether it was rear locking. Certainly, there was. There's quite a lot of locking going on. Uh, I'd be surprised if it was rear locking. I'm just looking at the size of the brakes on this. Um, but yeah, a, a very good fun vehicle to drive and pretty. A pretty damn respectable time, nevertheless. Well, we had a mad 800 horsepower van as the very first vehicle to run through this course. We now have a mad 550 plus horsepower Mini to run through in this second episode. I have many fears about this. Built by Big Hands and Boris, it's called the Paddy Hopkirk 2 Electric Boogaloo. I think it should be called the Terrifying Death Machine because it weighs about 700 kilos with 550 horsepower. 1.9 litre turbo I-4 at the front, all-wheel drive, big tyres. Um, tiny brakes, as you can see, to save money, of course, because it is 14,946. We've got drums at the rears, very small discs at the front. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of power. It will be brutally fast accelerating. There are concerns about where on earth in the power band, well, whereabouts in the rev range, I should say, the power's going to be. I'm going to hazard a guess, probably quite hard. Didn't let me go at the expected time. Well, it's going to be a bit of a practice run. Yeah, it's going to be a savage. Oh, it's going to be a savage. You must be at about 7,000 RPM for any power, uh, which is when you're going to want to be changing gear. Uh, so, <laughs> we will, I guess, see how this one pans out. Now, there is... Of course, there's potential for a car like this to be quick if I can keep it under control, if you can tame it, because that acceleration is going to be immense. Uh, there isn't too much weight to slow down, so while the brakes are potentially quite diddy, uh, being able, or not having so much weight to slow down, handbrake doesn't seem to work in the slightest, so we're not going to be worrying about that. Acceleration there is, is ridiculous. Uh, Handling-wise, actually not as terrifying as I thought it was going to be. I did think it was going to 
want to murder me. Uh oh. That's well. <laughs> as I say that, we we boot. That was not the car. That was me getting a little carried away with the uh, the speed there. I think I beached it, you know. Oh wait, come on. And hey, we're out. <laughs> uh, sure. Okay. I can't quite get away with that much speed through there. We can probably still make it. Maybe. Surprisingly. It's fine. I mean, it is surprisingly okay with being on three wheels. That, I would not have... Oh, God, it does kind of tip in a little bit through there. Don't, don't get caught on the wall. And go. Oh. <laughs> There's no power low down. There's, there is no power. It's kind of a good, interesting experiment to see how little power there is low down. Um, yeah. Oh, did I... Uh, oh no, I didn't miss a checkpoint. Never mind, ignore me. That one's around there. Um, yeah, there is not much power low down, so we're going to have to be very, very careful with that car. Let's have another go. Don't clip the rocks. Don't be a muppet. Don't hit the rocks is a generally pretty good... It's generally pretty good advice for any car that you may be driving. Uh, but this, this one especially. Yeah, it's not the full-on terrifying death machine. Handling-wise, is. I mean, fairly sorted, as good as good as sorted as anything we have driven so far. It's not one that I trust sliding around, especially not with the power delivery, because you're never sure if it's suddenly just going to get a kick of power and plant you in a wall somewhere. So we're going to have to be oh, a little careful with this. Slow it down for the hairpin. Uh, I, think I'm, I think the hairpin does work a little. It's certainly not, it's not the most powerful, not the most powerful, not the most consistent handbrake that I have had to work with. Now, easy does it through here. This is where things went wrong last time. I'm going to make sure we're nice and slow on the way in. Try and be quicker on the way out. Still a little bit moving around. This, I mean, we're on this weird dust. So there's always going to be a little bit of moving around. I mean, just about everything is going to move around a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> nothing's really had the grip. The sunburst is moving around a bit here. Oh, that's not going to go so well for us. Come on, get some power. Get some power down on the exit. There we go. Up towards the chicane. Pulls around a little bit. Uh, down here, and I can't—I just can't get to full throttle with this vehicle. Uh, it does change direction nicely down there. Now we can unleash all of the power. Oh, it's quick! It's very quick indeed, actually. Through there, an 18 once, Evan for the mini it might smack into everything after the finish line. Right, apologies. Terrible cough is apparently back, which is always fun while trying to record stuff. Uh, <laughs> Final run for the Mini. We're trying to get a 117 out of it, which will either happen, or I say it'll, it'll either happen or it won't. Uh, it's just as likely, I think, we're going to end up in a wall chasing a 117 as it is us being able to get a 117 out of the vehicle. It's nicely enough done through the first corners. Uh, watch that lunatic level of power as we fire down towards this next long corner. Yeah, I don't trust this car if it's sliding around. The second car, the Andromeda car, I trusted that moving around. I felt like I had control over that and it was consistent enough. This uh, is a little bit sketchy if it starts moving around. I just don't trust that it's going to... Uh, it's just going to do what I want it to. I can't really do the fine controls when this one's moving around. So we will go for, yeah, the smooth, smooth is fast approach. Drop it through the chicane. I like this. That, that chicane might be, well, my favourite corner on the circuit. Especially when you get it right. And you can get that transition perfect in whatever car you might be driving. Especially in a nice high grippy car. Very, very rewarding corner. Little bit of sliding again through all of that. This braking zone here is probably the toughest on the circuit. Uh, the, the, the road slightly curves and the amount of cars that have been going left into a right-hand hairpin there is scary. I cannot... Oh, no! I cannot get the power down there. The car was just moving constantly. And that is... That is not an easy place. That is not an easy place for... Well, not a good place for things to go wrong. Not an easy place to drive a car. Yeah. <laughs> it's just been worth moving constantly across the sands, across the dirt, whatever the hell this surface is, and punching a rear tyre. Bugger. It was looking good for the Mini, but this much power... This much power with this delivery is difficult to drive down a narrow stage where a tiny little mistake can be incredibly punishing. Very, very quick when you get things right, but a difficult one to get things right with. And we are back to a sensible-looking rally car for the final vehicle of the day, built by Grid Ghost. This is the Scarab Flare RX, a fantastically orange car. We've got 
something interesting going on with the lights. I think that is that like a front wing, perhaps? Try and get some front downforce going on there between the lights. Um, I mean, it looks the part, certainly. Fantastic looking uh, rally car. Again, he's using this kind of bubbly hot hatch uh, shell. Not quite as high riding, although still quite high on the old suspension. Uh, engine wise, it's the only non turbo i4 of the day. We have a. 2.4 liter i6 at i believe is turbocharged i mean it's still another turbo car but it is an i6 in this one uh, of course all-wheel drive we have got rally tire or off-road tires on the car i'll eventually call them right things very big brakes which i like to see gives me some confidence in the stopping abilities of the car i guess we'll find out just how fast it's gonna be plenty of noise from this one uh, not Short gears, not quite as crazy short as the first car. Brakes actually feel pretty damn solid on this. Feel fairly consistent, which I like. A little bit of understeer down there. Now, it's not going to accelerate quite as madly as the Mini. That much is for sure. It is, uh, while a fast car, this one, it's got some 300 plus horsepower. Uh, it hasn't got uh, Mini's level to power to weight ratio, which is... I mean, fair enough. We're not expecting everything to. I'm hoping it's going to be more controllable. That's the important thing. Oh, we've clipped the inside. It does seem like it gets out of these hairpins well. The power is actually in a usable place in this car. Uh, so we can get punch out of the hairpins nicely. That, I like to see. Throw it through the chicane. We can clip the bush through there. I'm always worried there's going to be a hidden rock or a hidden dip on the inside that I've not found yet. They're going to wreck a car. Uh, we might find it, or there might be at some point, so you push too much through there, but so far, we can get away. Oh, this is going wrong. Into the hairpin. In fact, even second gear out of there. Yeah, so the gear ratios in the engine are working very nicely to pull it out of the hairpin. It's probably one of the best accelerating cars out of those hairpins we have had so far. We can throw it through that chicane. Oh, this is quick. That's very quick. We're into the 17, 17, 5 from the Scarab. Okay. That is a damn nice, a very big crash after the line, yes, but that is a damn nice car to drive down there. Uh, it's not quite sunburst quick, but we're getting ever closer. We're getting ever closer. Oh, and power, sorry for this one. 360 horsepower. Actually, a little bit more power than I was expecting from it. Very, very accessible power in this. The turbos, in fact, it's not the craziest turbocharged engine looking at the boost pressure that we have going on, and I think that might be the key. Turbos are great and everything, but when you start whacking up the boost to insane levels, yes, you can get massive power figures, but you just can't drive with that. Not on a stage like this, not when you only have, not well, when I only have three runs. This car, for example, I trust this car after a first run that I can be aggressive with it. i believe that this car will stick to the road if you know if we start slipping and sliding it around the engine is nice and smooth with how it delivers its power so i've got a consistent level of i say a wheel spin a slip basically and it's getting out the hairpins well i might have braked a little too early for the chicane transition here little wonky through all of that still not found any hidden rocks in the trees there so <laughs> that's that's good for me uh, will we have any oh overdriven there ever so slightly get away with a little bit of handbrake through there don't clip the rocks now this is where we've had so many issues with cars before uh, we're a little deep actually this time around which isn't great we'll still get on the exit get on the power nicely out of there uh, we're still gonna have a little tap on the brakes through there up towards the finish line we go oh it's good it's very fast we're into the 15s we are so close to the sunburst <laughs> 15.29 is the time set by the Sunburst, and we've just done a 15.35. That was a mega run from the car. This is a hell of a vehicle. I mean, we have obliterated the competition so far. Let's not forget, this is only the second episode of vehicles running down here. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is a mighty, mighty car. It's just... E I say it's easy to drive. Nothing's easy to drive down a rally stage. It never is. But... This is forgiving, lovely, lovely power band. It just works. It just works down here. But <laughs> I need to find tiny fractions. Problem is, that felt like a damn good run. That felt like a damn good run. Can I find the tiny fractions needed? Will it end up in a wall? I hope not, but there is always there is always that risk that it might end up visiting the foliage when you are going for those tiny fractions. Yeah, this is a 
This is the first car that's really felt like I, A, I can push it, and certainly really felt like it might be able to challenge the Sunburst because it sticks to the road. It sticks to the road well enough, and this is usable power. This is exactly what we've been talking about. You need to have a level of power that you can use and that can actually get out of the hairpins, and this does. Handbrake is, again, iffy. Some of these cars just don't seem to have a working handbrake. So it kind of worked, but intermittently, which is very peculiar. Oh, put a wheel in the ditch on the outside. That's just dragged the car slightly wide. Oh, <laughs> nearly took out the rocks on the way through. Yeah, okay, so there's a ditch on the outside of a slightly different point there that I did not know about. Uh, that's going to be a fun one to, I say, to experience. I was trying to get a good line through the chicane, and it just didn't quite work. Uh, we are better at the hairpin down here, though. Don't put a wheel in the ditch on the exit. Uh, we've seen a few cars already uh, end up in that. Now, throw it through this back chicane. Keep foot down on the runs of the finish line. It's no good. It's no good. Well, I say it's no good. It's still a 17, which is bloody fast. It'd still be the fastest car. Nah, not enough. I mean, I'm down a bit more than I expected to on that, I'll be honest. Uh, I know we were wonky going into the chicane. We lost a bit of time there. I was slightly wonky on the fastest run through there. <laughs> so, I mean, it's quite possible that that second run was one of those mega runs that you do when you can't re replicate without an awful lot of attempts. But, uh, yeah, that got so close. That got so, so close to uh, to challenging that sunburst. It's an incredible vehicle, this one. Um I said, by far and away the easiest to drive hard down that stage. Very easy to drive hard. Very, very usable engine. Very usable power. Gets stopped well. Very close. Couldn't quite, couldn't quite beat the sunburst, but got very, very close indeed. So, we're on to our leaderboards, and it is, well, it's all changed. The uh, Scarab goes very close to beating the sunburst, however cannot quite. The beam car will lead the way. The crazy mini will go into third place. It does beat the Dragon Motors vehicle. Very close between the pair of them. Uh, the Galaxian will end up down in seventh place. I mean, it is all quite close around that area. 21 is a pretty damn decent time through this course. Uh, so, I mean, it's some interesting results. Certainly, there's a lot of people not expecting cars to really challenge the sunburst. The automation cars are considerably more difficult to build to get that level of speed. And the second episode, the scare has pretty much almost done it. So, we are going to see there are some potential uh, for some very, very quick cars down here. Uh, we'll have to see what we end up with next time out. That, though, will be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time... A goodbye.